Right, so throughout the many years of covering TikTok drama on this channel, we have took a look at many different genres on that app. We've took a look at the DIY genre, the mortician genre, the tattoo genre, like so many different types of genres. But one genre that we have never covered, and quite frankly, I would never assume that there's that much drama in it, is the cruise ship genre. But when I tell you that this new situation involving this specific cruise ship has completely taken over TikTok over the past few weeks, I mean it. It's everywhere you look, it's almost as if it's like a reality show, but it's just from creators who happen to be on the ship posting TikTok videos and we just kind of like follow along and try and keep up. Luckily this video is going to be a little bit more lighthearted. it's not as serious as some of the other topics we've covered recently, I mean yet at least. But it does seem like this has been a bit of a mess that has been great entertainment for a lot of people. But in case you have no idea what I'm going on about right now, let me add some context. So as we can see right here we have the ultimate world cruise, all four corners, one on epic voyage. Now what's interesting straight away about this cruise in particular is for how long it is going on for. It is 274 nights, it's 9 months long. You see 11 world wonders in 60 plus different countries. And to be honest I get the appeal right, if you want to travel the country this might be a fun way of doing it. It does sound like a bit of a nightmare to me, I couldn't think of much worse to do than just be like stuck on a ship and you get like a couple days at a time at different places. Not my cup of tea. And to be honest, it doesn't matter what my opinion is on this because quite frankly, I can't afford it. We will get to the prices in just a second, but let's actually read a description of this cruise, shall we? Get ready to see the world in a whole new light. Introducing the ultimate world cruise on board Serenade of the Seas. You can spend 274 nights bonding with like-minded explorers over global discoveries across all seven continents. Now that's an interesting sentence as we will get to later because the bonding between guests hasn't really seemed that great, apparently. Or pick a corner of the globe and explore every inch of it on one of our four Ultimate World Cruise segments, each an immersive voyage of 60 plus different nights. Connect with countless distinct cultures, soak up the most spectacular landscapes on Earth, and marvel at the world wonders that showcase mankind's boundless imagination. Sounds bloody brilliant, doesn't it? It's very clear that someone definitely used a thesaurus to write that. You got all your key words on there, it sounds great, doesn't it? It almost tempts me to actually spend my whole entire life savings on a cruise. But yeah, as you just heard there, you don't actually have to pay for the full nine month cruise there was two options right you could pick the full nine month cruise where you travel the world or there was four segments four ways to see the world as we can see right here so basically your two options were paying for nine months or 60 days but this is where the problems began because when it got to the point of the cruise starting which was less than a month ago i think it's about 20 days ago now they were nowhere near to selling out the entire cruise i believe there was about 2400 tickets available only 1500 of them sold and only 700 of them were for the full nine months and like I've hinted at already, when you look at the prices, you can see why. Now before we get into this, I do just want to mention before I forget, does this remind anyone else of the whole like fire festival situation? Like clearly not as bad because the cruise has happened, unlike the festival. But I'm seeing a lot of similarities. I'm seeing a lot of people say that this is going to end up in a Netflix show eventually, but who knows? But yeah, let's take a look at the prices here, okay? We can see the cheapest possible option for the full nine months is $54,000. And that's if you pay in full, it seems. You get a safe 10% if you pay it straight away. I guess this other rate is if you have like a direct debit and you pay monthly. And this is for the interior stateroom. And let me just say, I've seen the rooms. We will get to that eventually. But it doesn't exactly scream $54,000 to say the least. If anything, it screams like university dorm room rather than a $54,000 cruise ship room. But I mean, who am I to judge? And as we can also see, the most expensive option is the junior suite, which is $117,000. And there has been tons of problems with these price in general, right? Not just the fact that it's very expensive already, but it's like a whole like hierarchy system going on in the cruise ship where like people have paid like the ridiculous amounts aren't being social with the people who paid less, like as if they're like peasants or something who could only afford $54,000. Like if you haven't paid the full amount, you're not allowed in like Facebook groups and stuff like it seems really fucking bizarre but it seems like the biggest problem that's came about the prices is like I said at the beginning at the time all you could pay for was the full nine months or 60 days but then we had the problem of the tickets hadn't sold right the cruise isn't going to make the money that they were expecting to make and I guess they panicked a little bit and they've put more tickets on sale which is way way cheaper so as we can say here you can now pay for as little as two nights on the ship for like £240 per person. And there's just way more options, right? Three nights, four nights, the list goes on. There's just way more tickets for different areas of the world. And there's a lot of problems with this. For one, the people who paid for the tickets originally 
only had the two options. The lowest option was $54,000. That was for the full nine months. Obviously, it's a bit cheaper if you did the 60 days, but it was still a ridiculous amount of money, and that was your lowest option. So if you only wanted to be on for like a couple of weeks, a month maybe, you still had to pay a stupid amount of money. But now all of a sudden, people can pay way less to have the same experience, and maybe could just go on for the two weeks, and they can pay for up to two weeks. And in fact, people on the ship actually started working out that you could do the exact same trip that they were doing, and it'd be way less if you bought it in separate segments. I've met some people who have been very savvy and they have cancelled their world cruise booking and saved thousands and thousands of dollars depending on what type of room you have or suite etc. One woman said she saved about $60,000. They saved $60,000 from cancelling their world booking that they paid for to then do it in segments and you've just got to kind of like check out and check in over again which I guess could be a bit of a pain in the ass but that's a ridiculous amount of money. But that wouldn't be a problem if that was an option originally but it wasn't. They had to pay over $10,000 of they're doing the 60 days, over $54,000 of they're doing the full nine months. But like I mentioned before, this isn't the only problem that has happened due to these prices and whatnot. You can't really blame the price for this. There's just people being bad people in general. But there seems to be a bit of a divide between like the people who've paid to travel the full nine months and the people who've maybe only paid to travel 60 days. I'm here to see wonders of the world. I missed out on a talk the other day about the Northern and Southern Lights because I'm not part of the Facebook group. And I'm not part of the Facebook group because I am not allowed to be part of the Facebook group. I've tried to join it, I'm left out because I am not a world cruiser. Which you've got to say is absolutely mental. I get it, right? If you pay a certain amount of money, you get different benefits, right? You get different perks and whatnot. But to exclude people from like the Facebook groups of people who are just trying to make friends and socialize and make plans and see the Northern Lights, for example, that seems a bit bizarre to me. And it seems like specifically a bunch of Pinnacle members, which I didn't really know what that was before. Apparently it's like people who got like a bunch of points by going on cruises previously. Like people who were like love cruises, right? But apparently some of the Pinnacle members are just leaving people out and have rubbed people the wrong way over and over again. There are a couple of people, um, there always is, who um, are the exception to that rule um, so far. Uh, it seems to be the Pinnacle members who expect a little bit more uh, and are less welcome welcoming, but they really are the exception as opposed to the rule and not all Pin Pinnacle members are like that. Which unfortunately with something like this, you're always going to get people who think they're fucking better than others and this is exactly why I just wouldn't enjoy this environment at all. Like yeah, it sounds like a lot of people, 1500 people, well 700 are going for the full time. Sounds like a lot of people but you are going to see the same faces over and over again and if there are people who aren't so nice, you're going to be seeing them a lot and you're stuck in a ship for nine months. I couldn't really think of much worse personally. A few weeks I get it, I'll do it for a few weeks, happily do it for a few weeks but nine months, uh, no thank you. It's also very funny to hear that the people who've paid the maximum amount for the tickets think that they're on some like higher pedestal and like they're leaving people who didn't pay the crazy amounts for tickets out of stuff because everybody on the ship is pretty well off realistically like especially if they pay for the tickets before these like separate tickets came out they're all pretty well off they paid at least fifty four thousand dollars if they're there for the full time but yeah let's actually take a look at one of these room tours here and i've got to say the person who's actually making this video seems like a lovely person right so if i am criticizing the room i'm not trying to criticize her she's paid like a ridiculous amount of money for it it's just it, 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 you'll see what I'm you see what I mean. I don't need to go a disclaimer. MTV and welcome to my crib. Come on in. Yeah, so this is one of the rooms. I imagine this is like the cheaper option just because it doesn't have windows. And I saw that that was like a thing with the cheaper options. They didn't have windows. Obviously, you had to spruce it up so we won't look at the plain walls all the time. And I mean, she's made the so, most out of it, right? She's decorated it really nice. The mail for each of the ports, so keep a lookout for that. And obviously, as an interior cabin, you know, we had to bring the outside in. So we did that with some help from Ikea. Shout out to their plant walls. And I mean, yeah, like, it's like a, like a small, like, dorm room, right? Like, fair enough. I would love to stay in something like that for a few weeks. It's just nine months is mad, especially when you've paid so much money. I've seen some of the rooms that people have who've paid like upwards of $100,000 and they're in like massive rooms and multiple bedrooms and whatnot, massive kitchens, literally look like 
big apartments. But I just feel like if you are going to pay $54,000, you should also have a pretty decent room for that. Now, of course, since there are a lot of people spending a lot of time on a ship, people went away with their families, right, with like in couples and whatnot, and you're with each other 24-7, there's going to be some drama that happens just between like families. And that has definitely happened over the first 20 or so days of this journey, 20 of the 270 days that's going to happen. Like we have this video right here that says the real drama on our nine-month cruise has started. And in the caption, they go on to tell a bit of a story. I promise the good, the bad, and the ugly, so here it goes. I stayed on the ship to do laundry today, etc. While we are in Recife, Brazil? Recife? I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. It's 10.30am and I've already heard a couple arguing in the hallway by our room and when I went to the laundry room down another hallway to get my clothes out of the dryer, a woman took her husband's wet clothes and threw them all in the laundry room floor and told me she can't live with him anymore in their small room. Since we have been travelling the USA and living in our motorhome for the past three years and I felt like if anyone could understand, I could, I tried to give her a few tips but she wasn't having any of it. I think living in such a confined space is going to become a problem for many, as it took us a while in our motorhome to adjust. It's hard to have wet clothes everywhere, or have it come back from the ship's laundry three sizes smaller, and there's just no room to spare. In all seriousness, I've got lots of tips if anyone wants to listen, and none of them include throwing your spouse overboard, I promise. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's not much of a surprise. Like I said, they're only such a small percentage into their journey right now, there's probably going to be a lot of stuff that happens on this ship, and so many of them post videos to TikTok, because there's a lot of TikTokers on this ship, so I imagine we're going to see a lot of it throughout the next nine months or so. We also have a video from a TikToker called Brandy here who says that people have just been like assuming that she's a worker and assuming that she can't be rich enough to be like a passenger who's actually paid for the expensive tickets. If I get asked if I work on this ship one more time, started out at the pre-cruise gala, it was assumed that I must be working. After I said I was not working, then I was asked, was I independently wealthy? Like, basically, how did you afford this? Now, one of the crew members assumed that I was not a guest when getting back on the ship from an excursion. Which, by the way, must be such a shit experience. And unfortunately, like, I'm not going to say all rich people, right? So if rich people are watching this, don't hate me. But there are a lot of rich people who are a bit arrogant, to say the least. If they see someone that they don't think is your stereotypical rich person, right? Isn't just like a fucking 50-year-old businessman in a suit. They just assume that they can't be rich. And obviously I haven't seen the conversations, but I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if there's a lot of people who probably paid for the most expensive ticket and whatnot, who were just very passive aggressive. It wouldn't surprise me. And when you're stuck in a ship and you can't really escape them, I can imagine that that must be very fucking stressful. And also let me just actually give a shout out to Brandy Lee here because I was actually looking through some of her TikToks. Obviously she's on the ship, she's showing her experience. She goes through like the history of like certain places she's visited and whatnot. She's like very knowledgeable on all of this. She travels like that's what she loves to do and I recommend watching a video she's actually really fucking good and now for one of the most just like classic TikTok type drama situation that happened on this boat apparently people were amazed to see that there's potentially swingers on board and it all started when a woman called Edita posted a video of her front door for her dorm and as we can see right here she has a pineapple and it has Edita and Lee Pinnacle, which I believe are like the people who go on cruises a lot. And apparently, and by the way, you can always rely on TikTok to up your knowledge on certain situations, but apparently a pineapple represents swingers. Specifically, if you put it like on a door or something, it should signify to other swingers that you're a swinger and then they'll come by. I think that's what it is, right? But the only difference is it's actually upside down pineapples. So Adita here, poor Adita, is actually just a fan of pineapples, it seems, and thinks it's a good decoration piece, but people went wild about it. The pineapple, emphasis on room number, couch facing the bed, yeah, lol. Yeah, I've blurred her room number, but she shows it in the video and she says it <laughs> a lot, so I guess people are trying to put two and two together. We got people here just saying the pineapple, I mean, that's got 38,000 likes, like people were very invested in this. I didn't have the pineapple bunch on my world cruise cruise bingo card. <laughs> I see that pineapple. Get it, y'all. <laughs> and then we've also just got people saying I'm more concerned on why the room is so outdated for the price. To be honest, this is one of the better rooms I've seen. So yeah, we can see the room here. It's a bit bigger than the other ones we saw. But yeah, I guess it does look a bit outdated, doesn't it? But this is one of the family rooms, so I imagine that that's probably a lot of money. I mean, I don't know which one it is on here. Maybe it's like the Ocean View State Room, $65,000. I am just guessing here, but I mean, yeah, it's a lot of money. And like I said, the, the rooms aren't exactly the most amazing things I've ever seen. But yeah, getting back to Adita here, she did actually have to make a video responding to the comments on the videos and had to make it very clear that she isn't a swinger. Sorry to disappoint you, but we are not swingers. <laughs> but we do like pineapples. Here's my pineapple ring. Here's my pineapple necklace and earrings. 
and here's that infamous sign for my door again sorry to disappoint you <laughs> we're not swingers but we do like our pineapples <laughs> yeah so as i said just a huge fan of pineapples. I mean, people still don't believe her, right? People are commenting, girl, I believe you even less now. <laughs> but she's been properly playing up to it, right? She's posting these videos with captions saying like, which shirt should I wear today? And it's like a shirt with an upside down pineapple on it. We got this one as well with like a pineapple print. She genuinely does love pineapples, it seems. Like this is a bit of an obsession, isn't it? But she did actually go on to update the viewers because she did walk past a room that had an upside down pineapple on it. And she has said, swingers on the world cruise. Well, look what I found on my walk down the halls in the morning. They are here after all. <laughs> and then this comment makes me laugh as well. Adita learned something new on this world cruise. <laughs> she realized that her beloved pineapples have a very different meaning, but hopefully it hasn't ruined her love for pineapples, okay? They could have multiple meanings. But yeah, like I said, just a little bit more of a lighthearted video in this one. It's just been everywhere on TikTok. People trying to work out exactly what's going on. Like it's a reality show, putting the videos together seeing the drama and whatnot and like i said they're not even that far into the cruise at the minute so god knows what's going to happen i mean with that many people in such a small space all it takes is for, like one person to get ill and then everyone can get ill like that would be the thing that scares me the most probably it just doesn't seem like my cup of tea but i'm sure a lot of people do enjoy them and um yeah i mean let me know your thoughts down below and if you did enjoy please do a like subscribe all that stuff and until the next one i'll see you guys in a bit all right goodbye